everyone it's Liz here um yes I do look the same as another video <laughs> but um it's hot that's why and also uh, my shoguns is in flare today I'm very tired as you can probably see I'm puffy around my face and my eyes but this video is on my skin issue which is nodular perigo um now most people with EDS do have skin issues whether it's stretchy skin easy bruising poor healing um things like that and a lot of people have like eczema psoriasis um just random rashes they can't explain heat rashes are quite common as well um so i will tell you about mine and it's got a lot worse since lockdown and that is also due due to my anxiety um so basically i've always had pretty good skin until i i didn't even have bad acne when i was younger um then quite a way into my EDS diagnosis, so maybe seven or eight years ago, um, I started getting like really itchy. That's when my allergies got really bad. Um, my skin started getting like, if I itched it, it would just like form a scab. Like I wouldn't even have to itch it hard. And I was like, something's not right with my skin. And so it would get worse and worse. And I ended up going to dermatologists, um, like at my GP surgery, and I went to an allergy clinic, and they were just like, oh, it's um, just some kind of rash. Some people said it was urticaria. Some people said it was an allergy-based thing. Um, but I was lucky enough to go to the dermatology uh, clinic at Addenbrooke's, um, and they tried stuff, not much worked on me. So they did... Um, a skin biopsy and that was to look for I don't know what at the time and they said oh it could take up to six weeks to come back and within five days they'd um sent me a letter so I knew it was something major because they never get back to you that quick so basically the diagnosis was nodular perigo and it's fairly rare and I don't know anyone I think maybe one or two people who have EDS with it but it's not related to EDS directly. Um, I'm on a nodular prego support group on Facebook and it's a worldwide one. Um, there's not, as far as I know, there's not a specific UK based one because it's still quite rare-ish, much rarer than EDS itself. Um, but because I have EDS, it complicates it because my skin doesn't heal very well and I scar easily. So any scars that have healed, um, the, the, you can still see them even though they're healed. Um, the odd thing with me is that my skin actually is very soft on my arms and I have probably about 11 tattoos now and almost all of them have healed really well. It is due to really, really stringent aftercare methods that I use. Um, so yeah, that's why it's healed. I mean, I can show you, I've got this writing on my arm I got last year. Um, it says I'm a survivor, I'm going to make it. I will survive, keep on surviving. It's lyrics from Destiny's Child. And then I have this sunflower on my arm, which is my favourite tattoo. Everyone says how amazing it looks. And the colours, I mean, that's mostly down to the tattoo artist, but also my skin on my forearms are very, very smooth, um, which is an EDS thing if you have velvety skin. Um, sorry, I'm just going to move Mo out of the way a little bit. He's purring away. Um, good boy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so basically... Um, you can look up nodular prego. I'll put a link below for all the medical jargon and stuff. But um, basically you get an itch. Sometimes it can be like loose skin. But usually it's itchy like when you get bitten or something. And you have a little itch and that's it. And then it will scab over. Because usually if I itch even the slightest bit, I bleed. Like my skin is quite fragile. So then in my sleep, if I usually like lie on wherever I've scratched um it then re-bleeds in the sleep because the skin is very thin and then it will scab over again and then I will inevitably end up scratching the scab and it will re-bleed and scab and re-bleed and it's just a vicious cycle <laughs> so excuse me I don't know what that was so um so the treatment is steroid creams moisturizers things to stop you being itchy in the first place and to help with the itch so there's two creams I'm on at the moment well actually three but two for my thingies um for my scabs there is if I can reach it sorry my is in the way 
So there's one from just for my face because Steroquin is obviously very strong and you're not supposed to use them for a prolonged period, but I'm the exception. So I use this, which is Umavate cream. Um, now this is obviously all UK treatment, so um, I use it on here. I find that that heals, so I'm going to actually put some on today because I haven't put it on yet. Um, I find that it heals up and then I inevitably catch it with my finger by just accidentally itching my face. And then it just opens up. So this is only since last night. Um, this works really well actually, but you have to make sure you wash your hands afterwards. Because um, it's starry cream. Now, I'm going to show you the ones on my arms mostly because they are pretty bad at the moment. Now, I do actually think I have another problem going on because I have had really bad anxiety and depression since last beginning of last year. As you'll know if you've seen my previous videos. It's pretty much under control now, but I think part of my anxiety is I don't sleep well. And at night time, it's always worse because I've started to skim pick and looking into it more, having seen other YouTube videos, I might possibly have dermatillomania because I will pick and pick, even if it hurts and I know it's going to like gouge my skin out, I still do it. But the trouble is a lot of people who have this go to the GP and they get labelled as self-harming. And obviously for me, I have the skin condition that causes me to itch. So, and I know it self-soothes at night because my husband snores and when I can't sleep, I start to feel my skin and I don't like to feel bumps on my skin. And I know that might sound crazy to people who don't have this, but if you do, you might be able to relate. I like to have very flat, smooth skin. So anything that's bumping, I have to pick at to get rid of it. Um, I haven't seen my GP about it because of lockdown and all that, but... I don't know like what the outcome is going to be from that um so at night time i found um i've seen on somebody's youtube channel actually got these they're called uh, finger cots now these are latex so i know a lot of people are allergic to latex and i don't think you can get this in latex free but there are other similar kind of things now i actually call these finger condoms because they, that's what they look like and smell like to be honest um so what you do is before you, well, when you're in bed, you um, put these on and you put your finger, <laughs> this is really weird to show you, but anyway, um, you put this over the top of your finger and it's like the end of a balloon. This is, this, you can see why I'm calling it finger condoms, can't you? So you pull it down, depends how big your fingers are, until it feels a little bit tight, not too tight, because it's going to cut the circulation off. So if I do one up, it's just going to fall off in the night. So you want to pull it down until it's pretty, you know. And with this, I can actually still use my phone. Um, it's fine on the touch screen, so that's quite good if you still can't sleep. And I put one on the first, these three fingers on both hands, like this, because they're the ones I use to pick. And actually, these have been amazing. I'm not wearing them at the moment because it's so hot at night. You do sweat in these a little bit, so just be warned about that. Um, but I found that as amazing. But like I said, there's other products out there. I'll put a link to these in the description below. Um, they're just from eBay and there's loads because obviously I get through six a night at my worst. So you need quite a few. But you can get like silicone ones. You can get um, fabric ones, I think. Um, some people wear gloves. Um, it's really up to you. But that's really helped me. Um, so that's the picking side of things. <clears throat> now actually showing you these... Um, <clears throat> It's weird because I had it really bad in 2016 and then it majorly got better. Um, but my allergies have got a lot worse since then. So it's probably linked in as well. So this is why it's so hard to control because I don't just have the Nodra Prugo. I have the EDS and the allergies. So my this arm is the best arm at the moment. Um, as you can see, these are old scars here. So these have all healed and they're flat, but you will still see them probably forever. Um, my worst one... <laughs> You can't really see, actually, it's around there. But that's a good arm. This is a bad arm, and it's actually really bad at the moment. <clears throat> Some people call it, the little boy who lives near me, calls it my dots. But they're all up my arm. That's particularly angry at the moment. So for these, and anything else on my body that isn't kind of neck upwards, I use this, and it's Fusibet Cream. It has another long-winded name called fusidic acid bethamethasone but this is a steroid cream i've ordered some more actually it's coming um but 
again you can only use this for a short period of time and this is very strong you cannot use this on your face and also you, it thins your skin which obviously is a bit of a loophole for me because um i'm gonna put this on as i'm talking to you um because obviously i have problems with my skin being thin anyway so and if my skin's thin then it breaks out more so basically what you do is you want to rub it in a little tiny dab until it's almost all gone i don't just put it on there i put it around it too because the skin around it really itches um it also burns so sometimes at night um it actually hurts a lot it burns so bad it feels like sunburn type pain um because my skin is on fire and that doesn't help either so i'd love to know if anyone out there with nodular perigo watching this has any other tips um because i mean i've been given like shower gels to use and they're not shower gels they're horrible cream stuff that smell really weird and for me they don't personally work i use um dove which is very gentle on your skin and it's also very moisturizing now i'm going to show you my worst one i have on my whole body which is pretty bad and this is one that i actually picked up now Ignore my zebra tattoo, that's getting redone at some point. But this one up here, you can see it's been picked up. I've gouged my skin out. It's pretty bad. And it's not painful at the moment, but when I do it, it hurts. And a lot of people will question why I do it. Um, the answer is, I don't know. It itches, and sometimes it gets too raised up. And like I say, I don't like it raised up, which could be another issue entirely. But up here, you can see I've got more. Now, I know with dermatillomania, things like it's only concentrated in certain areas, but I pick up my face and my arms and my stomach and my bottom, actually. That's where I have all my scabs. And I actually started this year getting them on my legs as well, which is new for me. Um, they're not many. There's only one or two, but um, they're kind of healed. So I'll show you those. My legs, this one is, is almost healed um i had one that's a bruise as well there and then um i have one up here um and then i have many on my bottom which i'm obviously not showing you and then i have actually got quite a few further up so i can show you these um these i'm only showing you as far down as i can go but you can see these i have this kind of scabs all over my body um including my breasts and my stomach um now this i'm trying to be careful not to show too much so this one's healed and this one is been there for years then on my stomach i'm not really going to show because i hate my stomach but the worst one at the moment is here so they get very red and angry and obviously they can get infected um very aware if they do get infected because obviously they get redder and angrier so the other thing i actually use which i can show you as well is my doctor who a gp at my surgery has a um, speciality in dermatology <laughs> brain fog moment and i use this it's a steroid tape um Basically, I don't know actually how long you can wear it for, but I tend to have it two or three days because effectively it has steroid in. You can put cream under if it's really bad um, to moisturise it and stuff like that. But you do need scissors for this as well. Um, it's not pre-cut. It comes in a tube with silica gel inside because of the moisture. So you pull a bit off. You don't get a lot on your tube, so you can't waste it. Um, I usually cut, oh, I cut up here, and then you can get the bendy bit in the middle. And then I cut it into four, so I usually have more than four that I need to like cover over. Also, it's good if it rubs against you or your clothes or other skin. You know, it really does help. And I try not to use it too often because I really like um, to keep the tape as long as I can because it's really, I think it's quite expensive. For, but in this country, obviously, the NHS does pay for it and I'm super grateful for that. But like, for example, um, I'm trying to think of one I can show you on my arm. I'll probably show you this one. 
so you just peel off the paper and you get this so this is very sticky and you put it over and this is also waterproof um it sometimes comes off in the shower as long as you don't scrub too hard it should stay on and then you just put it on sorry i don't know if the camera is able to pick that up at all actually but yeah you can see it's pretty clear so it's not immediately obvious so that's quite good too if you're self-conscious i've ended up just not being self-conscious anymore because i'm aware they're there and even when these do heal these scabs i'm still gonna get this i'm still gonna get scars and the one thing i did get when i was in hospital last year is i have a lot of scars on my back and my bottom and they're like oh have you got pressure sores have you got chicken pox that's another one i get and i'm like no it's nodular perigo and of course i don't know what it is um so it's a bit tricky um yeah so this i use sometimes twice a day morning and night depending how bad i am but i try to only use it once a day because i don't want my skin to get even more thin than it already is um that i have had other creams i've had so many other creams and also every single day i use on my arms and my feet actually because my feet are bad um i'm on this which is called dermabase no diprobase sorry it's actually excellent cream but it's really good i used to be on one called zero base it's basically the same thing but it's a different company name um you have to make sure you refresh this every three or four months because it stops being functional and some people say oh you wouldn't know but honestly you do because when i was in hospital i was using my old cream and i noticed that my skin was a lot worse and i was like why is my skin getting worse when i'm using this cream and when i ordered a new one when i got home i noticed the texture was so much thicker and not as liquidy as the other one that yeah it had gone off so it does go off um, and it stops being as effective. And when I started using it, it was so much better. Um, so, yeah, you need to make sure that your creams are all in date. Um, the ones I'm using now on my body and my face, um, I tend to get through them so quickly that they don't really have a chance to go out of date. Um, and I can always, like, if I don't know, I can go back to my doctor. They're pretty good, although they're not, like, massively knowledgeable on nodular perigo most of them know about skin issues and like i say we have a gp who specializes in skin issues and also um they can refer me straight back to the hospital to the dermatology department um so that's always an option if it gets out of control and if they also like don't have any more things to prescribe from the gp and they want a more specialist like view or if they think that i need some more tests because i have been getting symptoms of infection quite a lot like boiling hot and the trouble is i've been in and out of a and e with covid type symptoms which we now think was probably just skin infections but i had spiked a temperature of i think it was 38.9 which is very high obviously um and just not feeling great and just feeling sick and headachey and but the thing is, I can't go on antibiotics. That's another issue. A lot of people have antibiotics to clear up the skin if it gets really bad. Um, mine, however, um, because I got C. diff last year and that was caused by antibiotics. Ideally, I mean, if you need them as an absolute emergency, then you can have specific ones. But I've chosen not to have them because um, I don't want C. diff back, to be honest. And my stomach is already in this heat, not behaving great. Um... So yeah, if I was to take antibiotics, there's a potential that it can bring back the C. difficile infection that I had, which is a bowel infection, um, for anyone who doesn't know. Um, and it's life-threatening, so yeah, that's why I was in the hospital for so long last year. So, I'm putting one more bit of tape on. Now, I'd love to hear from people all around the world, but I'd particularly like to hear from people in the UK who have nodular perigo, what treatments you're on, um how you got diagnosed, uh, what other medical issues you have as well, because usually there's something, even if it's something like eczema or, I don't know, something that affects your skin, allergies, that kind of thing. 
Um, I hope this has been useful for you to get an insight into what it's like to have Nodjapugo. Um, if you can relate to this as well. Um, I've been very open and honest about it as well. I do find that I get much better if my diet is better. Um, but because of all my allergies, it's very hard to find a balanced way of managing both my allergies, my stomach and my skin, which, you know, is tricky. Um, I've tried everything. I've tried like smoothie only diet diets, blending my food. I'm on the FODMAP. I've been on that years. I eliminated all everything and brought back in things I'm okay with. Um, I've done so many things. Um, to be honest, I'm lucky my face is actually only this at the moment because I did have some down here, which you can see the scarring from. Um, I have to be really careful with my face because obviously I don't want my face to get scarred. Um, this, I don't know where this is from. It's a scratch. Uh, <laughs> I'm not doing great with my skin and the heat makes it a lot worse. And because it's hot, I need cold showers a lot to cool me down. And obviously showering more often... Um, it really affects my skin. I have to re-cream every time I've had a shower. But I do find that if I've had a shower, I will then not dry myself with a towel. I will lay a towel out on the bed and lie on that and dry naturally. And that doesn't aggravate your skin as much. That might be a good tip. Um, obviously, things like shower gels be careful with um, because they aggravate your skin too. That's why I use very gentle ones. Um Obviously, the medicated ones work, but I don't feel clean from them. I don't like them, so I don't use them. Um, so that's my problem, really, uh, personal preference. But, um, yeah, um, if you want to know more about, like, anything that I've said in this video, comment below. Please remember to click like and subscribe because that massively helps me out to know if you're liking this content or not. Um, and hopefully I shall do more videos like this in the future. So, okay, that's it for me. Bye.